thousands of people go missing each year. Thankfully, most will turn up, others will tragically be found dead, and some seemingly vanish without a trace. Today, we're looking at what happened to Helen Frost. On October 17, 1952, Dennis and Daphne Frost welcomed their second daughter, Helen, into the world. Four years after her birth, the family made a big life change and moved thousands of miles away from the United Kingdom to British Columbia, Canada. Sisters Helen and Sandy had a stable childhood. Their parents were devoted to each other and their children, and Sandy said that they were good parents, despite their sometimes rebellious teenage girls. In 1969, Helen moved to Prince George, British Columbia, and she was joined in November by Sandy, a woman called Darlene, and Darlene's young baby. In the spring of 1970, Helen's life would be turned upside down as she fell pregnant. On the 13th of May, she gave birth to a baby girl, who she called Sandra. Sandra would soon be taken into government custody. Helen left the home for unwed mothers and returned to Prince George. Her relationship with Sandra's father Stefan fell apart and she was unsuccessful in her attempt to regain custody of her daughter. According to her sister, she left the social worker's office in tears and they never spoke about the incident again. Helen's personality was an interesting mix. On the one hand, she could be quiet, private, and introverted. On the other hand, she could be impulsive and spontaneous. Her and her sister would hitchhike with strangers and Helen was comfortable with this kind of hasty behavior. On the 13th of October 1970, Helen was at home in her apartment on the 1600 block of Queensway in Prince George. Her sister Sandy came home at around 8pm and Helen asked if she wanted to go for a walk with her. But Sandy said no, saying it was too cold. Around 20 minutes later, Helen said she would go for a quick walk by herself and wearing her navy blue coats and blue trousers, she left. When Helen failed to return home that night, people were not immediately concerned. Her impulsive nature meant she could sometimes be gone without explanation. However, as time passed, her sister began to worry, and on the 15th of October, two days later, she was reported as a missing person. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police, also known as the Mounties, were tasked with investigating Helen's disappearance. When she left to go for her walk, she left behind her clothes, money, and ID. The police had their description, around 5 foot 5, about 125 pounds, blonde hair, blue eyes with a right eye that drooped ever so slightly. The police soon received a tip that Helen had been hitchhiking from the Hursty gas station in Prince George, but they could find no evidence of this. And before long, the trail had gone cold. Every lead would prove to be one dead end after another. One theory that was quickly ruled out was that Helen had been injured or died in a tragic accident. The police could find no evidence that she had been involved in any kind of accident. Investigators were quick to look at the possibility that Helen had run away. She had a history of hitchhiking and disappearing, however her sister Sandy did not agree with this argument. She said that Helen had left her money, ID, clothes, other personal items, and had initially invited Sandy to go with her. The tough circumstances that Helen found herself going through at the time she went missing also led the Mounties to examine the possibility of suicide. Having recently lost custody of her own daughter and then living with Darlene and Darlene's young child could have been too much for Helen to bear. The difficulties she was facing could have led her to take her own life. Sandy also dismissed this theory, saying there was no evidence of a suicide, she hadn't left a suicide note, and she didn't seem out of character. There was speculation as to whether or not Helen had met a friend after she left her Prince George apartments, and they were quick to interview her ex-boyfriend Stefan. After numerous interrogations, they deemed him not to be suspicious. Sandy said she had discovered a tip that Helen had possibly hitchhiked with a trucker, however the police have not confirmed this. Highway 16 is an important part of the Yellowhead Highway. It's 450 miles long and stretches between Prince George and Prince Rupert in British Columbia, Canada. It's perhaps more commonly known as the Highway of Tears. 
It's been the site of numerous unsolved murders and disappearances, starting in 1970, with a disproportionately high number of the victims being indigenous women. To investigate these unsolved crimes, the Mounties set up Project e -Panner. The number of victims varies. The official list from the Mounties has it at no more than 18. However, Aboriginal and Indigenous organizations say that the number of women who have been murdered or gone missing on the Highway of Tears could be over 40. Chronologically, Helen Frost was the first woman to go missing on the Highway of Tears. Helen's family have fought tirelessly to have her name added to the E-Pounder victims list. And despite the pleas of her family, the Mounties denied their request. They said she did not meet the criteria for being a victim on the E-Pounder list. May 30, 1974. The skeletonized remains of a woman are found wrapped up in a blanket, buried in a shallow grave. The police theorized that the Jane Doe had died alongside a bank robber called Gustav Osley Carmichael, who was most likely her boyfriend. They believe they had been murdered around December 31, 1970. And this fits in with the plausible dates of Helen's timeline after she disappeared. Jane Doe, found in the shallow grave, used the alias of Lorraine Stahl. And two people were convicted for the murders of her and Carmichael. Richard DeFreitas and Donald Brandt's motive was that Jane Doe was going to talk about Carmichael's criminal behavior and activity. In the months leading up to her death, Jane Doe made several phone calls to states on the eastern seaboard, and she was known to drive a 1964 green automobile, which had either Maine or Massachusetts plates. The vehicle was later found dumped in Connecticut with a Maine inspection sticker. After speaking to people who interacted with Jane Doe, the police drew up a composite sketch which bore a resemblance to Helen Frost. Despite the similarities, the items that were found on the New London County Jane Doe were not seen with Helen on or around the time of her disappearance, including an almond-shaped ring with J-H-S-N inscribed in it, a set of hair rollers, and a yellow raincoat. As of June 5, 2020, the Connecticut State Police and the Mounties are actively working to determine if the New Linton County Jane Doe is indeed Helen Frost. Tragically, on the 20th of July 2014, Dennis Frost passed away without finding out what had happened to his beloved daughter. Her sister Sandy has never given up hope and she has been the driving force behind the search for her sister Helen. In 2018, Helen's daughter Sandra reached out to Sandy after embarking on a search to find her birth mother and the two were eventually reunited. Despite the suspicious circumstances surrounding the disappearance of Helen Frost, no trace of her has ever been found. If you have any information relating to the disappearance or whereabouts of Helen Frost, then please contact the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. And if you have any information relating to the identity of the New London County Jane Doe, then please contact the Connecticut State Police.